Hello all you data loving engineers. So today I want to talk about the Confluent Certified Developer for Apache Kafka or CCDAK or CCDAK certification exam. And I'll discuss why take the exam, who can take the exam, how I prepared for it, how hard is it, how long did I prepare for the exam before passing it, my exam experience, my top tips for taking the exam, and then I'll wish you good luck. My name is Jan Stoneman. I'm a solution architect and I do cloud stuff and I like doing the certifications as a way of studying. It's a good curriculum to keep yourself going and focused and structured in the learning and you gotta keep learning in this field. Why take the exam? The first reason is Kafka is becoming important in general, which is we're creating more and more amounts of data and we wanna take advantage of it in real time, in parallel, by multiple services at the same time. Netflix is doing it, stock markets are doing it, people are using Kafka, folks. The second reason I wanted to take this exam is that I noticed my previous customer using Confluent Cloud, uh, my current customer using Amazon's MSK service, the managed service for Apache Kafka that Amazon has. I wasn't involved in those projects, but it made me think, ooh, this is something that's getting more hot. And I wanna be able to contribute to such a project if I get an opportunity to do so. And then the third reason is the same for any certification. It makes you stand out. Now that I've passed it, I've noticed that there are only 859 members of Confluence certified community on LinkedIn. So that puts me in a pretty small community, relatively speaking. And who can take this exam? Well, anybody who has $150 to spend on an exam. There aren't any technical prerequisites or experience prerequisites. And I had to take the exam twice because I didn't follow the advice that I'm about to give you. So I spent $300 on it. Fortunately, the company I work for reimbursed me for the second attempt because I passed it. And now the main part of the video, how I prepared. So I listened to all three of these courses, the Kafka 101 by Confluent. That's a playlist on YouTube and the Kafka deep dive course on a cloud guru and the Confluence Certified Developer for Apache Kafka CC DAC exam preparation course on a cloud guru. I listened to all three of those in their entirety. And then I dabbled in a few other resources such as the course by Stefan Marek on Learn Apache Kafka 2.0 ecosystem and a little bit of his Kafka streaming course. That was useful. And I listened to a few episodes of the podcast about Kafka by Confluent called Streaming Audio, a Confluent podcast about Apache Kafka, just to get a better sense of the Kafka community and what people are thinking about these days. And since the company I work for gives me a subscription to the O'Reilly platform to read any O'Reilly books, I did look certain things up in Kafka, the definitive guide by some of the creators and maintainers of Kafka by Neha Narkhede and Gwen Shapira and Todd Polino. Out of all of those, if I had to choose only one resource, I would have chosen the Kafka deep dive course on a cloud guru because it went really deep, but really concise. So it's something you could just listen to over and over again and get a ton of information out of. And finally, I guess the most important way to prepare is to do some hands-on practice. So I went to the Confluent Cloud platform and to Amazon MSK, and I compared those two services. I you know, launched clusters on both of them, saw what all the options are. And then I also produced and consumed content from the MSK cluster I had created using an EC2 instance on which I had installed Kafka. By the way, for my comparison on MSK with Confluent Cloud, uh, I see the links below for a video and a blog post I wrote about that. Now the next question is how hard is the exam? Well, I failed my first try, okay? Um, I was feeling pretty confident because I had just passed a really hard exam, the Google Cloud Network Engineer exam, and I figured, you know, I'll just breeze through the CC DAC course on a Cloud Guru, take the practice exam. If I get an 
okay score, I'll just take the exams. <laughs> okay, but I didn't really have any Kafka experience before, so uh, getting a 73% on a Cloud Guru's practice exam after a week of studying didn't mean much. <laughs> I failed the exam. So one reason was that I was thrown off by the word developer in the title of this certification because there's also an administrator uh, certification that Confluent has put out. So I thought I don't need to worry too much about stuff like uh, Java garbage collection, <clears throat> wrong. This developer certification does sprinkle in a couple operational questions here and there. So I spent five more months, you know, doing a little bit of study here and there, you know, 10 minutes one day, uh, an hour another day, 30 minutes another day, uh, just kind of puttering along with my study in my spare time. And five months later, when I took the practice exam again, I got an 85%, which a Cloud Guru considered passing. And then I was like, okay, I'll schedule the exam and see how I do. And sure enough, I did pass. So I think Confluence expectations of the passing score are a little bit higher than some other certification exams I've seen. By the way, for those surprise questions on Java garbage collection and so forth, I found the Kafka deep dive course on ACloud Guru to be really helpful. And what was my exam experience like? Well, I liked that it was on Zoom. This is the only certification I've taken so far where they just used Zoom and Zoom works really well. So that was nice. And I liked that it wasn't as long as other exams. It was just 120 minutes and I actually only needed 60 minutes of that because the questions were pretty short, but even though they were short, they were kind of tricky. Some of them even had unnecessary, irrelevant information designed to just throw you off. So watch out. And my third tip, get at least an 85% on the 8 Cloud Guru practice exam. And don't do it like the day after the last time you took the practice exam. If you fail the practice exam, put a lot of extra study into it and then take it again like at a later date. So you're not just basing it off of your memory of the last practice exam. All right, that's all I got. Good luck. If you like this video, be sure to give it a like. And if you like what I'm doing here, please subscribe and leave a comment below to tell me why are you taking this exam and how are you preparing? All right, see you next time.